To start the sides, we're going to be looking for wood that's two and a half inches wide, and that'll actually be a height eventually for your ukulele, but two and a half wide and 20 inches long. And that's enough for two sides. There's actually two of them that you need, and we'll get into that in a second. But the nice thing about the ukulele is most of the pieces we're using can be found in the scrap bin. We don't have to grab a nice 12-foot board to get it. Not always, so if you can't find it in the scrap bin, by all means, pull out a big one, whatever you need. But I'm gonna check here, and here we have cherry. This is my short rack. I don't see anything that's 20 inches long, so I check down below in the medium rack, and I found this piece of wood right here. So try to find a board that is not free. In other words, it doesn't have any knots in it. That's what I meant. So if, if it's got giant knots, it won't be able to bend. That represents a very, I don't know, a brittle part. It'll pop out or it'll shift or there's cuts in it that as you bend it, it'll want to snap. So try to find boards that don't have any knots in it, no major defects. So again, we're back to two and a half by 20. We set the upcut saw to 20 and cut. Now we take that board and run it across the jointer. Next, we set the table saw to two and a half, right there, and run it through and rip the other side off. Now you saw in that last second that I took the board and actually flipped it over. It wasn't necessarily because it had a good edge on one edge or the other, it was because it had a lot of sap wood. So hopefully on the video you can tell the difference. This is heartwood and that's sap wood. I didn't want the sap wood in there as a variance of color, so I cut it off. So make sure to look for that as you're cutting your boards. If it's got a lot of variation in color, make sure you know what you want and you're getting it. At this point I've zoomed in quite a bit on the saw blade because we're gonna be doing a bigger cut that I need you to see. So first, to make this cut, it's going to be down the long edge with the board sitting this way against the fence. We're gonna be cutting a thin strip off the entire face, which means we have to raise the blade quite a bit and we have to take the guard off. So here's how you do it. First, move the fence out of the way and lift the guard. Now obviously the blade is not running at this point, uh, so please make sure it has slowed down and stopped already. Right here on the throat plate, lift and pull out. Now we're gonna reach down on the right side of the blade and there's a door that I, if I push to my right, the door flops open and then there's a handle right here. And this comes out. You can kind of see the handle now that it's gone, it's right here, it just goes down and up. Okay, and that releases the guard right here. I can lay that to the side. Now we just reverse everything. We push this handle back down, close the door, which is just on a hinge, and we put the throat plate back in. Now remember, there's two screws here and here, and we need the heads of those screws to go under their two screws here and here. The heads of these go under these two, and that's what keeps this from flopping up and down. So if you just set it down, you'll notice there's a big ledge, a big bump here, so your board will actually go across and then drop down. So you gotta back it up, you'll hear it kinda collapse, and then push it in straight, push this back end down, and we're ready to go. Now we place our board here, and raise the blade, which is right in front of my knees, turn it, until you see the bottom of these gullets, the base of the teeth, match about the height of the board, roughly, okay? Just in there. Then we pull that away. Now we move the fence over. Now how thick are we making these pieces? We're making these pieces an eighth of an inch thick. One eighth of an inch, let's see. Right there. So an eighth of an inch will be a little thicker than what we actually need for our ukulele. So what we're gonna do is take what's left and run them through the wide belt sander after this. Now you also need this push stick or one that looks like it because it wears out you can see that the center has been cut out many times. But the most important part of this push stick, it goes against the fence right here, is that this section has to be there, this one right here. This is about an eighth of an inch, and that's what will be pushing your board through the table saw. Without it, 
When I'm done cutting, the piece that's trapped between the blade and fence will go shooting backwards. So it's got to have this. If this breaks off, come and get me. I can make another one of these in a few seconds. This is just a piece of MDF that I just put together for a push stick. So here's how it's done. The technique is your left hand needs to have the thumb on top and you're pushing the board against the fence here, right in front of the blade. Never ever should your left hand be here, pressing it where the blade is. Now your hand may pass by it, but I'm never gonna push against where the blade is because that's when you get burns and it wants to kick back. So keep your thumb on top, that's what holds it from doing this, and keep your fingers on the side. Very similar to a jointer, if you will. That's the same technique. My right hand is on the back of the board, like if I was jointing it, on top. So I'm gonna start without the push stick, but it is in reach. I've got it right here next to me, and I'm gonna start pushing it across. Put on your safety glasses, hold it in, and just push across, and keep moving your left hand back. Now, when my right hand gets close, now I can grab the push stick, and I have to have it against the fence right here. Keep going, and then I let go with my left, all the way through with my right. Now, even though I was careful, we still get burns, but don't worry, those will sand off. You need to two of them, so we do it again. Here. Hold it with your left, grab your stick, Keep it tight and let go and through. When you're finished, you'll have two strips that are an eighth of an inch thick. And if they're burned a little, that's okay. That happens all the time. That's a lot of wood you're removing at once. But these will get sanded out. But right now, take a quick glance. You wanna aim straight down. And I want you to look at the edges. They should be a uniform thickness. If you see a lot of variability because you weren't quite tight on the fence, this is when you can cut another one. That board I gave you probably will give you four cuts, three at least. So you might get two new cuts if you need. And look down, they look pretty uniform. I would even bend them a little, okay? If you hear any cracking, any cracking at all, I don't hear any there. Okay, I don't hear any there either, go the other direction. If you hear any cracking now, you'll definitely hear cracking when we try to mold them around our molds. Okay, so now's the time to make sure. If cracks exist, may as well get some new ones now. One other thing I wanted to mention as well as looking down the edges, is if you end up with cuts like that, burns, this usually happens when you're pushing it into the, into the uh, face of the saw blade, which is what I said, make sure not to do. But it even happens if you pause for too long. Now, I, I don't say you can't stop. I get that, because I demonstrated stopping. But if as soon as you push in, this might happen. Now, don't freak out too bad. If the rest of your board is fairly uniform in thickness, the sander, which is our next step, should take most, if not all, of that out. But this is why I say, those boards can give you three or maybe four, depending on its thickness. So uh, let's fix it first thing and see if it works before we go make another one.